All right, so here's example one with uh, concavity and points of inflection. So we want to find the point of inflection of f of x equals x cubed minus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay? And we also want to know where is f of x concave up, where is f of x concave down. So remember, that's just a short way of saying where is the graph of f of x concave up, where is the graph of f of x concave down. So when we talk about concavity, remember, we really mean the graph, but we'll just say it like this uh, just, for, just to keep it short. Uh, okay, so, um, and like we mentioned in the last video when we introduced this stuff, uh, this is really pretty similar to uh, finding intervals where f is increasing and decreasing. But, you know, instead of doing the first derivative, we're going to work with the second derivative. Because remember, uh, a function is concave up when the second derivative is positive. A function is concave down when the second derivative is negative. Okay, so um, we're actually going to do this part first. Okay, because remember, a point of inflection, what is that? A point of inflection is a point where the concavity changes from up to down or from down to up. So before we can even answer this first part, we have to do, we have to figure these out. Okay, so uh, how do we do that? Well, here's how we do it. So uh, f of x, let's go ahead and rewrite f of x here. f of x equals x cubed. Let me zoom in a bit. It's easier to see. x cubed minus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, so what's the derivative? Derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And then uh, minus 6x squared, so the derivative of that is going to be minus 6 times 2x. So that's minus 12x, right? And then minus 3, and then plus 1, that's just a constant, so its derivative is 0, okay? So that's the first derivative. Now we're talking about concavity, remember, so we have to go to the second derivative. So uh, f double primed of x, okay? Uh, if we take the derivative, now we're taking the derivative of the first derivative. Okay, so if we remember the second derivative, that's just the derivative of the derivative. So the derivative of 3x squared is 3 times 2x, which is 6x. And then uh, minus 12. Okay, the derivative of 12x is 12. Okay, and then minus 3 is just a constant, so its derivative is 0. So uh, this right here is our second derivative. Okay, so uh, now that we have our second derivative, how do we proceed? Well, the next thing we always want to do is figure out where is this second derivative 0 and where is it undefined? Okay, so remember, that's uh, exactly the same thing we did with increasing and decreasing functions with the first derivative. Okay, but now we're doing that with the second derivative. So the process is really identical, just with a different derivative now. Okay. Um, all right, so then what we do is just set that equal, use a different color here, uh, set this equal to 0, okay, and then solve, solve for x. So 6x minus 12 equals 0, uh, which means 6x equals 12. Divide both sides by 6, then x equals 2. Okay. So we want to be careful. Remember, uh, when we talked about critical points with the first derivative, we could say, OK, there's a critical point at x equals 2, or x equals 2 is a critical point at a critical value. Uh, we can't do that with points of deflection yet, right? So we're not really sure yet. Um, is the concavity actually going to change here? Okay, we have to know. We have to know that first. Uh, if the concavity changes here, then yes, we do have a point of inflection at this x value. Okay, so that's uh, kind of the subtle difference there that we briefly mentioned in the last video. Um, you know, point of inflection is uh, the entire point here, not just the x value. And uh, we also have that restriction that uh, the concavity has to change. So how do we determine that? Well, that next step is going to be also identical to increasing decreasing functions. Uh, we're going to set up that sign chart. Uh, S-I-G-N sign chart. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we set up our sign chart over here, yeah, remember, always label these. Okay, so here we're talking about the second derivative, so we're going to label that F double prime. Okay. Oops. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and put our X value. Okay, here's X equals 2, so we're going to put that on the sign chart. So here's uh, 2. All right, and now just like before, um, or just like with increasing and decreasing functions, we pick one value of x from here, uh, from negative infinity to 2, and then another value of x from 2 to infinity. And then uh, we're going to plug those into the second derivative and see is the second derivative positive or is it negative. Uh, one thing I also want to point out, uh, at the beginning we should probably identify what the domain of this function is, but this is a polynomial, so uh, the domain is all real numbers, it's defined everywhere, so we don't have to worry anything about that. But uh, in the next couple of videos, uh, we'll see an example where we do have to worry about domain, okay. or we might have to. Uh, okay, so anyway, 
So what's a good number to pick from this interval? Uh, well, zero, one, zero is a good one, so let's just pick zero. So uh, what is f double prime of zero? Okay, and again, we don't care about the actual value, we just wanna know is it positive or is it negative? Okay, so f double prime of zero, uh, we're gonna use this here. So f double prime of x equals six x minus 12. Okay, so we're gonna use that. So f double prime of zero is six times zero minus 12 which is zero minus 12, which is negative 12. Okay, so this is negative 12, which is negative. Okay, and again, we don't care that it is negative 12, we only care that it's negative. Okay, so this value doesn't matter, but this fact does, that it's negative. Okay. All right, um, and then let's pick three from over here. So f double prime of three equals six times three minus 12. Okay, six times three minus 12. So six times three is 18, uh, 18 minus 12 is six, so this equals six, which is positive. Okay, so that means that uh, the second derivative is positive in this entire interval. Okay, so again, uh, you know, just like with uh, the first derivative and our sign charts we did for that, how do we know that we can just say this, even though, you know, we only showed it for one number here? Okay, we know that when x is zero, the second derivative is negative. So how can we know that, or how do we know that we can just say it's negative in this entire interval? Well, because, uh, you know, it's going to be negative in this entire interval, um, but if it's positive somewhere else in this interval, that means it has to cross zero because it's continuous, right? So if this fun you know, this is just a continuous function here, the second derivative. So if this ever becomes positive, it has to cross zero somewhere, but we know that the only place it crosses zero is when x equals two. Okay, so this is the only possible uh, value of x where the second derivative can go from negative to positive or the other way around. So that's why... Uh, we only have to test it at one number to say, okay, it's going to be negative everywhere in that interval or positive everywhere in that interval. Okay. But, you know, uh, we kind of talked about that with increasing, decreasing functions. It's the exact same idea. You know, you might notice we're really doing exactly the same thing, literally exactly the same thing, just with the second derivative instead of the first derivative. Okay. So, um, now we're almost there. We actually just have to write our conclusion and then, you know, uh, find out one more tiny little thing. So let's zoom out just a bit. So um, what did we just find out? We just found out that f double primed, f double primed is negative, is less than zero. Uh, f double primed is less than zero on negative infinity to two. Okay, remember when we talk about these intervals, just like with increasing and decreasing, we wanna use the x values to describe them. So these are x values, okay, two, uh, negative infinity, two. These uh, relate to the x values. Um, and f double primed is positive, greater than zero, on two to infinity. Okay, and again, just like with increasing decreasing functions, we wanna use open intervals here, right? Open intervals. Uh, okay, so, and remember our definitions of concavity, so uh, from the last video, concave up corresponds to a positive second derivative. Concave down corresponds to a negative second derivative. So. The second derivative is negative on this interval, that means the function, or the graph of the function, is concave down on this interval, okay? So, uh, and also likewise, uh, since the second derivative is positive here, then the graph of the function, or just the function, uh, is concave up on this interval here. So let's zoom out a bit. <coughs> so now we can answer these questions. Uh, where is f of x concave up? f of x is concave up on uh, this interval here, two to infinity. Okay, and where is f of x concave down? Uh, it's concave down where the second derivative is negative, which is negative infinity to two. So f of x is concave down on negative infinity to two. Okay, all right, so that's, um, two of the three things we have to figure out. So now the last thing we have to do is figure out, uh, find the points of inflection. So we only have one possible point of inflection because there's only one place where the second derivative is zero or undefined. Um, okay, so, and uh, we also know that here, the concavity does change from uh, concave down okay, to concave up, right? So the second derivative does change sign from negative to positive. So the, con uh, the function does change concavity from concave down to concave up. So we do have a point of inflection here. Remember, that's the requirement in the definition. The concavity actually does have to change. And we see that it does. So um, 
Now, it's not enough to just say two. So remember, if, you know, the point of inflection is the entire point, both coordinates, not just uh, the x coordinate. Uh, we want to know what's the corresponding y coordinate. So how do we figure out the y coordinate? Well, uh, this is the coordinate x equals two, and we're talking about points of inflection on the graph of the original function f. So we want to take two, plug it back into the original function to find the corresponding y coordinate. Okay, because we want the point on the graph f of x. So we have the x coordinate on the graph. So to find the corresponding y coordinate, we take this and plug it in there. Okay. So basically all we want to do is figure out what is f of 2. So let's come down here, zoom in a bit. Uh, f of 2 equals, well, f of x is x cubed minus 6x squared minus 3x plus 1. So f of 2 is uh, 2 cubed minus 6 times 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 1. Okay. So this is uh, 8. Uh, 2 squared is 4 times 6 is 24, and then minus 6 plus 1. Okay. And then this is pretty much a straight up arithmetic, and I'm running out of room here. So uh, this is going to be negative 21. Okay. So negative uh, 21. Okay, so uh, for the x coordinate 2, the corresponding y coordinate on the graph of the original function, always go back to the original function for that step, uh, is negative 21. So. Uh, we only have one point of inflection, and it's, uh, so we'll say the point of inflection, say the POI for short, uh, the POI is 2 comma negative 21. Okay, so here's, uh, those are our answers. So we have the point of inflection at 2 comma negative 21, and uh, F is concave up on this interval, two to infinity, and f is concave down on this interval, negative infinity to two. All right, and that's example one with concavity and points of inflection.